But as a teenager, my relationship with advice is still uneasy. If not in a social media bio or on a t-shirt, it is normally given to me when I'm running away from it. Picture this. It's 7 p.m., my phone buzzes in my pocket, and the moment I rummage around for the car keys with the goal of getting out the door, over my shoulder, I hear sounds that I don't quite convert into words with meaning until I'm halfway out the driveway. It could be a reminder to be safe, a simple I love you, or anything else. All important, but they're thoughts that were not immediately registered to properly acknowledge their worth. With such importance, frankly, I'm not sure what advice I have to give. Advice is supposed to be possessed by the wise, the experienced. But I'm at the same place in life you all are. I don't know what the real world is like. 
Sure, I'm a soon-to-be high school graduate with a strengthened understanding of our Constitution and of simple harmonic motion. But what do I really know? I couldn't tell you when third lunch starts, especially on a Hiller day. I'm leaving high school with the habit of leaving one of my binders under my desk. I wouldn't bet that I could open a locker. With the outlook of a peer, I can take a guess at the secret sauce to get through life, but I would need my own recommendations too. I do know what I'm excited about as we leave HHS today, the stories. I love hearing the memories my parents and my extended family have about their days in school. Take a moment now. Think about the stories your parents have told you about their time in high school. The people that claim the title of celebrity, the outcasts that bucked authority, the aunts and uncles that really aren't your aunts and uncles. All these chuckle-inducing anecdotes were fostered by the community that a high school creates. And while your diploma probably means much more on an application, the experiences you had during this special time of adolescence are another powerful memento. What will we recall? Thinking back to kindergarten, we can tell stories of our adventurous bus rides and of dear old center school. This is a time when every other day became every day, and then every day became the whole day, building on our endurance for stimulation just a little each year. I'll remember the texture of cafeteria French toast sticks, the excitement of recess, and heat-induced dehydration on the third floor. Then came Elmwood, a ceremonial two years. We all made convincing guesses as to who Swoops was at each assembly. We met and celebrated the Kenyan runners, preparing for them by learning songs, running, and researching their lives. Plus, those Kenya t-shirts are still pretty cool. And then we went on to Hopkins. With large lockers and the loop road, we tasted independence, foreshadowing what life would be like as a big kid. Forget Broadway. We were spoiled by the access to great acting in plays like Lewis and Clark and Pirates of Grammar Island. But we move on to middle school. As infamous as the problems are at this age, remember, we pushed past these years with cell phones and a trapper keeper in hand. I don't need to remind you of Kids Night Out or when Yoko Kawashima came to visit because we had the chance to document our brace face days with photos. And most of us got to Washington, D.C. on time. Life was good. Of course, high school has plenty to look back to. We were together in one building for four years, which is a long time without a break for a step-up day. We matured tremendously, both as scholars and as citizens. Prom, pep rally, and sporting events covered our calendars, providing us with time to be all together. When asked about this time, we'll tell stories about our appearances on meme pages and in meme online t-shirt shops. We'll reminisce about the good old days of music, from our be-free coffee houses to our SoundCloud discographies. We'll think back to long lines at Wendy's after Friday night football games and how we single-handedly kept seven Duncan locations open within a five-mile radius. This may all sound a bit silly, but these little moments of joy when we've pushed schoolwork aside to build friendships, inside jokes, and more will be the things we immediately remember. And as we move on to our next endeavors, we can choose to forget Hopkinton. We can choose to let go of the past in favor of satisfaction elsewhere. But I'm grateful this speech has forced me to think back to every up and down I've experienced as a student in Hoppington. And if I can give any advice to you, it would be to also take some time for self-reflection. We're all Hillers, but we're all also authors of our own stories about our time here. I'm not sure what parts of high school have been the most impactful to you, so you need to be the ones to document the chapters of your life. As you leave, Think about what stories you'll tell at a dinner party, or about what might spring up at a reunion. Think about what you'll laugh at waking up in the morning, or what will keep you up in bed at night. Think about the people and the places around town that might bring you to tears missing. Again, I can't tell you what you've retained or what's most meaningful to you, but I'm confident there are a few Hoppington stories in all of us we'll always come back to. Thank you. See you all on Facebook. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Kavanaugh up.
Good evening. Congratulations, class of 2019. Standing before you now, I must tell you that coming up with graduation remarks is no easy feat. For the past three weeks, that mental number two pencil in my brain has been scrawling furiously, only to be met with its formidable counterpart, the eraser. If you think about it, and clearly Alex has thought about it, graduation speeches have been delivered for hundreds of years all over the world, each replete with advice for the graduating class. So there I was, racking my brain, when I began to think about the fact that if you are the class of 2019, it was exactly 20 years ago when I was offering advice to the class of 1999, because I had been their class advisor. As 20 years have elapsed since 1999, I was wondering if my words had any real impact on the students' lives. I was also feeling a little old. You can imagine how much worse I felt when Mr. Bishop said, oh really, the class of 1999? That's the year I graduated from high school. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Bishop. Anyway, the one thing I kept associating with the year 1999 and advice was that song, the Baz Luhrmann graduation advice song, the one entitled, Everybody's Free to Wear Sunscreen. I'm assuming you kids are unfamiliar with that song, so Google it. But it opens advising, if I could offer you only one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it. The long-term benefits of sunscreen have been proved by scientists, whereas the rest of my advice has no basis more reliable than my own meandering experience. That, my friends, is pretty much true. The advice you graduates will get from your family, friends, and faculty comes largely from their experiences. You can decide what to keep and what to eliminate. After all, their advice is free. And you know the old adage, you get what you pay for. Oh, you're going to get lots of advice if you haven't already. Graduation and advice go hand in hand. You will get trite advice, the kind you encountered on those inspirational middle school posters. There's no elevator to, excess, to success, you'll have to take the stairs. Or, and this one's a classic, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. You'll find clever, optimistic advice. Comedian John Stewart reminds graduates that the unfortunate yet truly exciting thing about your life after high school graduation is that there is no more core curriculum. Your life now is entirely an elective. You'll get that harsh, fatherly, from time to time kind of advice, the kind that my dad repeatedly gave to my younger brother. If you keep acting like a fool, people are gonna think you are one. And of course, there's the advice from the sunscreen song. Accept certain inalienable truths. Prices will rise, politicians will philander, you too will get old. And when you do, you'll fantasize that when you were young, prices were reasonable, politicians were noble, and children respected their elders. Tonight, I'm going to offer you two pieces of advice, and I'm going to keep it simple. Very simple, five words simple. My first piece of advice, be nice. Nice like a superintendent who gives you a day off in December for wind. <laughs> You're welcome. Kidding aside, nice goes a very, very long way in this world. And the second, do your best. Spending lots of time worrying about who's ahead and who's behind isn't healthy. Trying to be someone or something you're not, never good. John Stewart reminds you, going forward from tonight, no more core curriculum, it's an elective. Graduates in the class of 2019, you do you. So that's it. That's my advice for you. As Baz Luhrmann pointed out, it has no basis more reliable than my own meandering experience. I bring you no data to support it, but I do hope that my remarks, in all their simplicity, prove helpful as you forge your own paths as Hopkinton Hillers set loose upon the world. 
class of 2019. On behalf of the Hopkinton Public Schools, congratulations, be nice, and do your best. Thank you. And now I would like to invite the valedictorian, Jane Stilwell, and the salutatorian, Priya, Priya Hegde, up to the stage. Two, three, four. Hi everyone, thank you for coming tonight. And in case you weren't listening to Dr. Kavanaugh, this is Priya. And this is Jane, thank you so much for coming. It wouldn't be the same without you. No, it really wouldn't. No, Jane, I was talking about them. All right, well, anyway, I'd really quickly like to thank my mom and dad for supporting me and for being here. Thank you, Thomas, Isaac, Grandma, and Michaela. Happy birthday. I'd like to thank my parents too, as well as my grandma and some friends who are here today. Jane and I would both like to thank the staff and teachers here at HHS that have made these past four years possible. Huge thank you to Mr. Hay and the entire band. We want... <laughs> We want to recognize Mr. Bishop, Mr. Hannah, Mr. Pominville, and Ms. King for all the wonderful work you do here. And Officer Powers for keeping us safe and reminding us that the speed limit on the loop road is 15 miles per hour. <laughs> wow. 15 miles per hour is a limit so that you don't spin it. <laughs> And of course, big, big thanks to the class of 2019 for being the best class there ever was. And... <laughs> and if we didn't say your name, but you still think you're important, please be a little humble. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts. So, guys, we made it. Ah. And... Just look at what this group has done. In the past four years, we have won Penny Wars three times in a row. I don't care what the freshmen say. We've learned about saving lives by pumping our arms to staying alive. And now it's graduation and Willie is free. Great. Priya and I remember being stuck at a service station with some of you in New Jersey for six hours back in eighth grade, but you guys made even that one of our favorite memories from middle school. That's not easy to do. I know it's hard to imagine, but I think in the next four years, we can top all that. Some people in this room are going to learn how to talk to animals at ZooMass, while others will, le will learn languages, solve world hunger, and be our next president. Of course, we'll still be on the lookout for a Dartmouth pop socket with Dempsey's face on it. <laughs> we even have some future professional athletes in this athletic center. Someone here next year is going to MIT, which I believe is a baseball school. I think it's MIT. Glad you took honors spelling. Well, our point was supposed to be that this is a really special group of people. I can proudly say that you guys are Earth's greatest heroes. I really mean that. Um, I haven't lived here all my life like Jane, but I really do feel like a part of this town. Moving here in eighth grade was probably the most scared I've been, besides when I almost had Endgame spoiled for me. But when I first came here, I got the impression that all of you were smart, kind, and really pretty. Granted, first impressions are often wrong, but this time they were right. Every one of you made me feel so welcome, and it quickly became apparent to me that I was surrounded by the best, most brilliant people I'd ever met, in the least cliche way possible. <laughs> yeah, you guys are hard to beat, and such a welcome replacement for that California life. Maybe you don't like the idea of being a replacement, and it's because of that word. 
A replacement often implies that whatever's leaving is no different than what comes next. But we like to believe that we're special and that we made a difference and that we are different. But Priya and I don't think that replacement has to mean that. So let me break down the word for you to show, to show you how we see it. Replacement. First you hear replay, because what we do here never really goes away. And then you hear cement, which is the glue that holds this building together. We will soon be replacing a freshman class at some university or in the workforce, the Air Force, or professional baseball. And there is a junior class ready to try and fill our shoes. Good luck with that. <laughs> but these are hard shoes to fill. I mean, look at some of these shoes. They're huge. <laughs> Starting a couple hours from now, when the class of 2019 replaces Hopkinton High School with the next chapter in their lives, we will never stop being fascinated by what we learned here. And we will never stop replaying old memories, because they are the cement that bind us together in spite of the different paths we're headed off to. And if you're standing here, or sitting, you're all sitting, and saying, wait, what memories? I have no recollection of doing anything significant while I was here. That's OK, because you've got time, a whole lifetime ahead of you. So take your time. Take it, use it, give it to people who matter, but don't throw it away, because then you won't get it back. Bear in mind that passing is different than throwing. And if you're waiting for your pizza to be delivered, then by all means, play a game of Uno, which will pass that time. As long as it's not Monopoly, that game is a waste of time. <laughs> or Game of Thrones, which isn't even a real game. You've never even watched Game of Thrones. That's, yeah, I can't say anything to that. <laughs> At any rate, the time we are spending now is not wasted. If you all leave tonight with one thing, I want it to be a diploma. If you have room for two things, take a lesson from statistics class. So the lesson is from a project I did last year called What's in Your Veggie Straw? Last year for my final project, I set out to discover whether the different colors of veggie straws actually tasted different. If you don't want to know the answer, feel free to block your ears. I won't be offended. So I actually found out two things. First is that I don't like veggie straws. They're not vegetables, and you, can't, you certainly can't use it as a straw, not that I tried. Second is that when you close your eyes, people cannot tell the difference between the green, the orange, and the yellow veggie straws. Out of 40 trials, only one person could guess three in a row. Shout out to Sophie Kaplan, number two doubles player. Hillers on three, one, two, three. Hillers! <laughs> Now, I know that right now most of you have dinner reservations and might be getting a bit hungry, but just imagine with us that all those colorful veggie straws you're dreaming about are the many different paths you could follow as you leave this building as a high school, high school graduate. Are the veggie straws different? Yes, it's called color. The green ones look green, the red ones look orange, and the pale yellowy off-white ones look pale yellowy off-white. And do they taste different? Maybe, but odds are, unless your name is Sophie Kaplan, you can't tell. And you're not going to regret choosing one over the other, even though they may not look like they're the same at all. So be decisive, because who you are matters way more than what you do. Whether after today you go on to 12 more years of school or 12 more days, feed the hungry or send people to Mars, or whether you write new novels or a new song for Kahoot. Which could be tricky. It matters, but not quite in the way you think. And hopefully during your time here at Hopkinton High School, you've learned more about who you are and that this will be a way to stay grounded no matter where you go and no matter which color veggie straw you choose to eat. So class of 2019, after tonight, we will miss you a whole bunch. But we are so grateful for this opportunity to replay our cement together as a group one more time. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and stay classy. Thank you and God bless HHS. And now we'd like to invite Mr. Bishop back to the podium. At this time, I would like to invite some very talented seniors whose names are in your program to get ready for their musical number. 
And as they do so, I would like to take this opportunity to give some special thank yous to the many people who have worked extremely hard to make the setup and production of this graduation possible. First off, thank you to the class advisors, Lee Greco and Chip Collins, as well as the class officers, Alex Wojak, Matt Dempsey, Ryan Hawkins, and Sam Cody for their leadership the last few years. I'd like to thank class parents, Mary Puella and Tammy Nado and HPTA rep, Ashley McNamara, yes, for their commitment over the last four years. It has been a pleasure working with you. Thank you to Ashok Ghosh, Carlton Badger, and our technical support personnel for the assistance with the sound tonight. And speaking of sound, thanks to Craig Hay for the excellent music this evening. Thank you to Andre Benoit and the entire custodial staff, Tim Persons, Bob Fleming, and our entire maintenance staff for the help with the setup here this evening. Thank you to HCAM TV for filming and broadcasting the event as always, Western Nurseries for the beautiful flower arrangements. Thank you to the hardest working and most dedicated staff, Marathon through the high school, that without your passion and commitment, the future of these graduates would not be so bright. Thank you to our wonderful main office staff of Kayla Sables, Cindy Grilly, Donna Plunkett, and Connie O'Laughlin. You are amazing. Thank you so much. And of course, thanks to the best admin team a principal could possibly ask for with assistant principals Josh Hanna and Justin Pominville, athletic director D. King, and SRO Phil Powers. And now our students will perform the song We Are the Champions by Queen.
Excellent job. I like how Queen is cool again. It's awesome. <laughs> and now I'd like to introduce Kinsley Rolfe, our student selected speaker for the class of 2019. I'm not as tall as Mr. Bishop. Let's see. I think that's good. <laughs> good evening, everyone. I'm Kinsley Ralph, as Mr. Bishop just said. This has all come full circle. To catch some of you guys up, if you never saw, in middle school, I spoke also for our eighth grade graduation. And I'm surprised they let me do it again because. Back then, I talked about how some of us had a few first kisses, and there was a lot of surprises in the audience when that one came out. So thank you for letting me speak again. <laughs> it's also come full circle because the teachers this year decided to give us a video on Senior Transition Day where they were all dancing at the end of it. We got the same thing in eighth grade, and it was all the teachers, but the one difference was Mr. Parker was dancing in a Cupid costume. And that is one thing none of us will ever be able to forget. <laughs> That's definitely ingrained in our mind. But back to the main point, we are here to celebrate the graduation of Hopkinton High School's class of 2019. After all of this waiting, we thought this day would never come. We, the class of 2019, have been together for 12 long years, and it has all led up to this. One thing that I have learned throughout my high school career is that you must go into anything you want to achieve or dream of with a pro purpose, pride, passion, and underneath it all, persistence. I like to call it the four Ps. Don't worry, I've been to other graduations and I know how long all of you guys have been sitting, I've been sitting with you, so I'll try and make this short and sweet. Our freshman year was the year of participation. With everything we participated in, they brought out a sense of pride in us. Many of us started out freshman year dressing as crazy as we possibly could for Spirit Week. I'm sure the craziest we ever dressed was for Senior Spirit Week, of course. If we participated in sports, we took part in our first ever psych-ups for games. We all made huge fan sections for countless Hiller games, especially this year. With all of these activities of promoting and cheering on our sports teams, we have gained a sense of pride in our own school. We also have a sense of pride in our Boston sports teams. Now I know some of you may not be a huge fan of the Patriots, Bruins, Celtics, Red Sox, or even the Revolution, but you cannot sit there and tell me that not one of you did not go to at least one of the many Boston parades we've had over the course of our years at Hopkinton. This brought us all a huge sense of pride for not only Boston, but for New England. Don't even get me started on the marathon. We're wicked proud of that. You will never forget those memories together as a class down there at the Common. One of the things we also have pride in is our grade. How long did it take us to sell out in Hiller foam wallets and Hiller pop sockets? I really hope to find those Matt Dempsey of Dartmouth ones sometime soon. Not long at all it took us to sell those. That's because of our amazing student council members and our best grade officers we could ever ask for. We should all give them a round of applause. Because of them and the amazing accomplishments of every student in our class, we have gained a huge sense of pride. We are leaving behind an amazing drama program that will surely miss all of their senior actors, an engineering program that has won countless awards with the hard work of dedicated students in our grade, I know some of them even made huge robotics, an art program that even showcased artists in their own work at HCA just this year, the ideas of community service work through NHS and our volunteering programs, and so much more. There's so much that we have left and improved on at HHS that we feel prideful for all that we have done. We're leaving Hopkinton with a strong sense of Hiller pride. Additionally, through all these activities that we have worked on at HHS, whether it is a sport, drama, the arts, engineering and technology, TV and media, or academic work, HHS has helped us find things we are passionate about with these passions, it has led us into being more driven to improve on the skills and hone in on what we feel best at. That is one of the most important things about having a passion. It drives us to work harder for something that we love. 
Think back through your years at Hopkinson where you worked on something so passionately it took over your whole life. That is how much you love it. Having passion strengthens us as people in what we want to do best. The third P is purpose. We are given a purpose. Here we are given a reason for something to be done. Probably for most of us sitting on the side of me, our reason is we want to leave. We all want to get out of here. I'm sure you guys do too. It's pretty hot. I see all the fans. There's no, when things are not done without a purpose, there's no pride or passion interlacing it. This makes the finished product not as impactful to our environment and to others. Maya Angelou said it best with, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. Lastly, we have persistence. Now we learned this a lot throughout senior year. There was one snow day in the random power outage, which I guess was wind? I don't know about that. Senior skip day was impossible to plan. Senior Halloween was on the same day as the Red Sox parade, but who can complain about that one? And it just seems like everything that we planned and envisioned for our senior year did not go how we wanted it to. Despite all of this, we persisted through because we wanted to graduate and we want to know and see how we can get through it. We've spent over 2,315 hours together. That is a long time. And this time has helped us become who we are. We have laughed, weeped, smiled, and felt so many more feelings together. But the most important thing is that we have learned so much. The one thing I took from it is my four Ps. I would tell you to always find something to be prideful in because it helps bring you closer to those in your community. It brought us closer, so think of that in later years. You must always be passionate because when you have a passion, you are driven to work as hard as you can for one thing that you love. This will take you miles in life. It is important to find a purpose. Finding a purpose will influence how you talk to others and cause you to change your ideas of the world. My grad cap keeps falling. I should have bobby pinned it like all the other girls. Still some advice that someone should have told me, so. The most important thing is that you have to have persistence. If you ever go through anything in life, I'll just take that off. <laughs> Persisting through, there we go. If you ever go through anything in life, having a strong persistence to finish and end the way you wanted, you will find your way. Persistence is what will get you through the hard times, including a graduation speech like mine. I want to thank you all for persisting through my speech, and congratulations, we are all finally graduating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I would like to invite our class officers back up to the stage to present the gifts and yearbook dedication. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Cody and I'm the secretary for the class of 2019. Today I have the honor of presenting the yearbook dedication. This year's yearbook is dedicated to Officer Phil Powers, our incredible school resource officer. This year was his 16th year working with and ensuring the safety of the students and faculty here at HHS. During his time here, he has developed a great rapport with everyone in the HHS community and has taken on his well-known nickname, OP. <laughs> he is hardworking and reliable in his work and is always caring and approachable. From seeing him every morning as we walk into school to watching him banter with students in the atrium and joining us at outer school events, OP's presence makes the HHS a happier and safer place. We all greatly appreciate him and his commitment to our school and to each of us as individuals. Thank you, OP.
Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ryan Hawkins and I'm the treasurer for the class of 2019. Uh, and tonight I'm here to announce our class gift. So graduation is not only a time of excitement and celebration for the students and families, but also a time for us to reflect on our high school experience. For our class gift, we reflected on what kind of gifts students in our school would really enjoy and be able to use for many years to come. That is why we are happy to announce for our class gift, the 19 Lounge, a room for students to relax during free periods in their school schedules. The room will come equipped with amenities such as comfortable workstations, sofas, and a ping pong table. We hope that the 19 Lounge will give students a place to enjoy and unwind during their already busy school days. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Dempsey, and I am the Vice President of the Class of 2019. It's been a pleasure getting to work with my fellow officers over the past four years, and I've thoroughly enjoyed hearing everyone's voices, planning class events, and yes, harassing many of you to buy raffle tickets. In all seriousness, however, my fellow officers and I wouldn't have been able to get nearly as much done without the help of our amazing class advisors, Mrs. Greco and Mr. Collins. I still remember the day we chose our class advisors four years ago. As newly elected officers entering high school, we knew that we needed strong guidance. This decision, though it was our first ever as officers, was incredibly important. But when we met Mrs. Greco and Mr. Collins, the decision was easy. Right away, we noticed that Mrs. Greco had a, a spirit of organization, and she was patient and professional, and Mr. Collins had a spirited energy that commanded your attention and respect. You could tell that they were determined to give our class the best high school experience that we could get. And for all four years, they've kept that same determination. They've shown up to every Friday morning meeting ready to work, listening to our ideas and helping to make them realities. They've always believed in us and have pushed us to be the best that we can be. But the best part about working with Mrs. Greco and Mr. Collins is that they're more than just advisors. They're friends. I can always go to Mrs. Greco's room and chat with her about anything, and I can always joke around with Mr. Collins when I pass him by in the halls. I know that others in the class feel the same way. They are both incredibly passionate about what they do, and their zealous spirit will be missed. To Mrs. Greco and Mr. Collins, a sincere thank you. We have a few gifts we'd like to present to you at this time. And at this time, we'd also like to thank Ms. Lachansky, Ms. Norton, and Ms. Manning. These three outstanding educators will be retiring at the end of the school year. They've dedicated much of their professional careers to HHS. Ms. Lachansky, 32 years, and Ms. Manning and Ms. Norton, 25 years, totaling 82 years between the three. Wow. The students of HHS have learned a great deal from all of them, and they have been tremendous role models for not only their students, but for their colleagues as well. On behalf of the class of 2019 and the many classes before us, we want to thank them for your commitment to the families of Hopkinton and to the impact that you've had on so many lives. They will leave huge shoes to fill and will be greatly missed. We'd like to call them up to the stage at this time to present them with a gift. Please join me in a round of applause to show our appreciation for their dedication to the Hopkinton Public Schools.
I'll now invite uh, history and social sciences teacher, Mr. Sullivan, to the podium to present the Marion T. Harris Award. Marion T. Harris served the town of Hopkins from 1935 to 1980. In that time, her roles included teacher, department head, assistant principal, principal, and acting superintendent. She was also a coach and advisor to multiple sports clubs and classes. This was obviously a woman on a mission, a mission to help, to guide, to excel, and to serve as a beacon of hope for others. Each year we honor this splendid educator in person by presenting the Marion T. Harris Award to the senior who best exemplifies Mrs. Harris's conscientious engagement in learning, genuine commitment to service, and deep respect for others. Let none of us treat such qualities lightly. They are especially worthy of note when we see them in young people. In a complicated world filled with temptations and distractions, it's rare indeed to encounter such youngsters who possess strength, wisdom, and decency beyond their years. If I may speak for them, the teachers in this room feel blessed to be surrounded by so many remarkable young men and women like those arrayed in front of you now. It's quite something when one stands out even amidst such a crowd. I've had the distinct pleasure of interacting with this year's Harris Award recipient in the classroom and in some other domains as well. It would be impossible for me to overstate my respect for the recipient's skill, integrity, and kindness. Kindness most of all. This is a highly honorable person who gives me hope for the future. I began teaching in 1982, working in a total of six different public high schools over that span. Six years ago, two dear friends of mine asked me to serve as grandpa to their son, who was at the time knocking on the gestational door. Tyler's brother Caleb followed him into the world three and a half years later. When I scan the horizon of my past teaching experiences, I can think of no student, none at all, whom I would rather have as mentor and role model to those two much-loved little boys. I can give no higher compliment to this year's winner of the Marion T. Harris Award, Stephen Simos. I now invite, I better set this up for him. I now invite our principal, Evan Bishop, back to the podium. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Congratulations, Stephen. I can't think of a more deserving recipient for this prestigious award. You have been an outstanding leader and role model during your four years here at the high school. So thank you. You will be missed. And speaking of being missed, I would like to say a few words about the graduating class of 2019. I truly enjoyed getting to know this group over the last four years and had a blast spending time with them at the recent Senior Week events like visiting the Marathon School, our five innings of a rain-delayed Red Sox game, the boat cruise, and the senior prank during which the Morning Star's goat, Percy, relieved himself not once but twice on the walkway in front of the school. <laughs> I've come to know that each of the 287 bright, articulate, driven, kind, caring, and funny graduates sitting to my left and right have brought something unique to the collective personality of 2019. As we've heard earlier, this class has many remarkably talented musicians and performers. They have some of the best leaders we've had in fields like theater, art, and engineering. And 31 of these students will continue to compete at the collegiate level in a variety of sports. And the list of accomplishments and talents goes on and on. In fact, one accomplishment that may not have received as much recognition outside the walls of HHS, but is quite impressive in its own regard, is this class shattered records for being tardy to school. 
I mean, you enjoy the snooze button like no other class we've had. But aside from tardies, when I think of this class, I think of resiliency. For example, this past October, as Kinsley mentioned, the class was faced with an incredibly difficult choice. Attend the Red Sox World Series Parade in Boston or attend the senior Halloween breakfast here at the high school. I know, the definition of adversity. <laughs> now, because I've become so fond of this class over the years, I actually considered moving the Halloween breakfast to accommodate the senior's request. But then I received an email from a member of the class that put things in perspective for me. It read, you're probably getting a lot of complaints, Mr. Bishop, and rightfully so. You should move the Halloween breakfast to Thursday so we can all go to the Red Sox parade. Sox spelled S-O-C-K-S. <laughs> Going to parades is a senior year tradition. Do not take this away from us. Now, when I was a senior in high school, the only Boston sports tradition I remember was watching the Red Sox blow large division leads to the Yankees in September. But besides actually winning championships, and hopefully another one shortly with the Bruins, clearly a lot has changed since I was a senior in high school 20 years ago. Obviously, technology is the big one and has changed the way we pretty much do everything. But another is this new phenomenon that a high school principal can be cool. That, that was my favorite joke. <laughs> another thing I've seen evolved over the years, and not necessarily in a positive way, is the intense focus and stress put on students as they gear up for life after high school. I just don't remember the pressures being so great 20 years ago, certainly not so great that my parents would Photoshop my head on a pole vaulter's body just to get me into college. <laughs> but to this class's credit, they've handled these demands skillfully and have met the challenges they have faced along the way. I have watched them take this pressure in stride and fill up their resumes. I think that most adults in this athletic center, myself included, could not even imagine doing what they've done at their age. Seniors, I've observed you over the years move from one activity or task immediately to another, working tirelessly and never taking a break. You've been on the equivalent of a high school hamster wheel. These days, sadly, it seems that being busy is looked at as a badge of honor or some trendy status symbol. There's little time for rest, reflection, or downtime anymore. So with that in mind, my small nugget of advice for you today is not what I heard 20 years ago, which was advice like, be the change you want to see in the world. Don't let others define you, and if you think you can, you can. It's perhaps a little counterintuitive to the messages you've heard throughout your high school careers. It's when you can embrace being bored. Now, hear me out. What I mean is don't fear downtime when you have the opportunity to actually take a break. Don't think you're a failure if you're not always quickly transitioning to the next activity, club, job, assignment, opportunity, game, insert whatever here. I know you are overscheduled. But when the overscheduling subsides in a few short months, try not to panic. Instead, use downtime to your advantage. Believe it or not, resting and recharging do not translate into weakness. Actually taking time to yourself and not feeling guilty about it, or having fear of missing out, or FOMO as you like to call it, is actually a good thing for your mind, your imagination, your creativity, and your productivity. Hitting the pause button from time to time is so important in preventing burnout, which I see far too much in young people nowadays. Now listen, I acknowledge that hard work, grit, and determination are all critical for success in today's society, and no one's arguing that. But let your mind rest easy, knowing that even the most successful people in the world close their laptops or cancel their meetings every once in a while purely so they can recharge. They recognize that if they can't take care of themselves first, everything else suffers. For example, LinkedIn CEO Jeff Weiner and billionaires Warren Buffett and Bill Gates all make sure they schedule empty spaces in their calendars during the day to help protect their time. And Oprah once said, if you neglect to recharge your battery, it dies. And if you run full speed ahead without stopping for water, you lose momentum to finish the race. So graduates, over your next 20 years, while you're out being the change you want to see in the world, not letting anyone define you, and doing anything you set your mind to, which I have no doubts you all will, please remember to take breaks and stop for water. If you're feeling burnt out, rest. When you're overwhelmed, take deep breaths, or better yet, find the bravery to ask for help. Find a healthy balance and genuinely try to enjoy your friends, your family, and who you are in your young lives. When possible, step away from the curated world of social media, hit mute on the voice in your head, and embrace downtime and boredom. Because when you stop focusing on where you're supposed to be or who you should be, you can actually think about who you are. And because based upon what I've seen, I think you're going to like what you find and realize that you already have so much to be proud of. So in closing, class of 2019, thank you for four great years. Thank you for your curiosity, your energy, and your personality. They will all be missed. It has been an absolute pleasure serving as your principal. I wish you all the best in the future, 
and promise me you'll always be kind to one another, be positive, and keep smiling. Thank you. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. Now I'd like to invite school committee chair Nancy Cavanaugh to hand out the diplomas and assistant principals Josh Hanna and Justin Pominville to read the graduates' names. Alexander Francis Wojcik. Matthew Ryan Dempsey. Samuel David Cody. Ryan Thomas Hawkins. Charles James Baker. Emma Claire Edwards and Estelita Feather Eva Sarah Coravilla Daniel Kunith Logan Raymond Joseph Lucas the Third Samuel Joseph Morningstar. Kyle Leonard Perkins. Julian Young Tatro. Celia Rose Potus. Evan James Sisiski. Young Zhu Wang, Caitlin Margaret Abbott, Rakoya K. Alashabi, Joshua Harris Altman, Gabriel Franca Amaro. Brianna Victoria Antoloni. Aaron Michael Arutin Arakelian. Mia Elizabeth Ardilla. Hayden Alexander August. Riley Elizabeth Babin. Keon Bari, Michael George Balerna, Corey Michael Bannon, Elizabeth Mary Barnes, Benedetta Bazi. Emma Jean Beal, Alexa Jane Benak, Francesca Alina Bianchi, Matthew Alexander Bean Cully, Matthew Patrick Bird. Saheed Bola, Beatrice Bonincara, David Frederick Bradley, Nicholas Dwyer Bradley, Elizabeth 
Mary Bronstein, John Joseph Brennan, Matthew Paul Brown, Ryan Edward Brown, Noah Daniel Guentello, Allison Maureen Baderlis, Madison Fagan Bernie, Peyton Joseph Burns, Sarah Elaine Cahill, Natalie Elizabeth Calkins, Isabella Mwiwa Callery, Marguerite Augustine Card, Matthew Robert Cardillo, Theodore Roman Cavallo, Grace Ann Cavanaugh, Caroline Elise Centrella, Isabella Brooke Caruli, Mitchell Brewster Chandler, Julia Maria Cirillo, Alexander Peter Clark, Olivia Catherine Quelo, Meredith Corson Coffey, Giorgio Cortesi, Alessandro Cotella, Isabel Ann Cotino, John Austin Cowan, Brett Nicholas Crochier, Eli Jefferson Curl, Lucas Matthew Deloya, Brett Roland Daly, Matthew Fantasia Davis, Mitchell Joseph DePaulo, Tam Doan, Ashley Zahe Donnelly, Tyler John Doherty, Morgan Elena Drasbeck, Francesco Sante Duca, Laura Alexandra Dufresne, Grace Kathleen Dustin, Mustafa Ibrahim Elgabri, Davin Skyler Evans, Luke Patrick Fairbanks, Elena Pilar Fajardo, Cameron Mady Fatahi, Anna Chien Fang, Abigail Grace Fisher, Taylor Yezi Fortunato, Julia Marie Fowler, Zachary Martin Frank, Maud Alice Wiggin.
freshman, Abigail Marie Furlong, Ludovico Garini, Kai Garland, Marguerite Ann Gone, Marina Giannaza, Dylan Patrick Gillespie, Cole Tyler Glassburn, Luke Eugene Glidden, Natalia Gomez Donati, Sophie Claire Goodno, Tess Margaret Greenwood, John Chase Griffin, Alexander Anthony Guerra, Yifan Gua, Catherine Svetlana Hagen, Megan Olivia Halloran. Jordan Christopher Hanna, Amanda Marie Hansen, Cora May Hardigan, Priya Hedgedy, Brian Thomas Hurlihy, Kieran Michael Herr. Zachary Andrew Holbrow. Madeline Sarah Holden. Caitlin Elizabeth Holly. Alexandra Jean Holmes. Zachary Michael Horgan. William Thomas Hubner. Nicholas Thomas Hines. Abigail Lynn J. Anna Katiera Jefferis. Ciara Ann Johnson. Daniel Charles Joyce. Ryan William Joyce. Caitlin Elizabeth Jurassic. Sarah Yiji Kang. Stephanie Alexandra Capellos. Pamela Elizabeth Carp. Andrew Charles Keeley. Ryan Patrick Kelleher. Abigail Amelia Kelly Lancer. Brendan Donald Kelly. Jared Samuel Bogdan Kelly. Niall David Kelly. Kaylee Jane Cohane. Ryan James Kester. Fahad Muhammad Kawaja. Olivia Emily Kershey. Sarah Kaisia. Ethan Alexander Kramer. Blake Donovan LaBerge. 
Imran Mohammed Ladha. Spot is this? Yeah. What was that? Timothy Joseph Lane. <laughs> Alexandra Angel Lazaroff. <laughs> Alexandra Rose Lee. Bridget Lee. Benjamin Aaron Leibowitz. Thomas Eston Lincoln. McCollum Graves Lind. Mackenzie Caroline Lockhart. Matthew Thomas Long. Christian Andrew McDonald. Sydney Shanyi McDonald. Liam Edward McGinnis. Amanda Ha Tang Mack. Emma Elizabeth Mann. Ryan Hassan Mannon. Blake Edward Manning. Madison Taylor Marcou. Mitchell Joseph Marcou. Nikolai John Markovich. Austin Daniel Marks. Sophia Elizabeth Marks. Allison Jean Marr. Hallie Ann Marshall. Anthony Arthur Martinez. Dylan Stephen McBride. Philip Peter McCarthy. Jack Gerald McDougall. Benjamin Kyle McKenzie. Taylor Lynn McLaughlin. Cecily Patricia McNamara. Emma Ann McNamara. Grant Allen McNamara. Maxwell Burke McNamara. Lauren Elizabeth McNamee. Emma Catherine Margaret Meek. Corinne Arlene Messier. Elise Rose Paolino Miller. Ivy Elise Massagia. Brianna Rose Mitchell. Sydney Avery Moran. Lillian Grace Morningstar. Kimberly Odundo Morrow. 
Lucas Michael Moynihan. Ryan Patrick Muldoon. Connor John Murchie. Juliana Bell Nato. Andrew Stearns Nealon. Ricardo Negri. Tiange New. Lauren Page Nordling. Justin Francis Normando. Christopher James North. Sydney Michelle Olafson. Isabella Irene Onsi. Robert Michael Paleucci Luca. Andrew Thomas Paleco. Serena Pangiotopoulos. Tess Juliana Papagni. Olivia Grace Paradise. Taylor Ann Pardoon. Bryce Robert Parker. Neil Manho Patel. Caroline Marie Paul. William Anthony Poella. Sydney Elizabeth Pearson. Eli David Peterson. Alyssa Marie Poisson. Michael Cooper Puvacad. Leah Louisa Portal. Isabella Claudia Powalska. Alexandria Elizabeth Power. Benjamin Mitchell Powers. Garrett Michael Powers. Derek Pratt. Daniel Proudman. Shadman Alam Rakin. Molly Louise Rancourt. Sage Eleanor Radcliffe. John Thomas Riley. Cassandra Antoinette Rizzo. Matthew Christopher Roberts. Michael Connor Roach. Kinsley Carol Rolfe. Corey Anthony Rosowski. Adam Keith Rowe. Lydia Kilpatrick Rudden. Devin Joseph Rudder. Daniel McManus Sage. Anastasia Salmucci. Peyton Lindsay Salyards. Joshua Aaron Sandman. 
Angel Manuel San Giorgio. Ty Anthony Scanlon. William Russell Scannell. Robert Lawrence Scanavan. Camilla Young Schemmel. Sierra Autumn Slushel. Jacob Stanley Schmidt. Susanna Marie Schroeder. Eric James Schwartz. Nat Sir Kitsarmi. John William Symes. Jacob Edward Simmer. Stephen George Simos. Daniel Murphy Cynical. Jack Anderson Sloan. Hannah Rose Southern. Claudia Maddox Stett. Jane Elizabeth Stillwell. Nalan William Storm. Kyle Philip Stuckel. Danielle Jean Sullivan. Kevin Francis Sullivan. Megan Elizabeth Sward. Caitlin Marie Sylvester. Chandler Thomas. Cole Marshall Thomas. Colin James Tyne. Brianna Christine Toko. Aaron Harold Tran. Leah Grace Tirano. Hayden Ashton Van Beek. Ha Nguyen Ne Va. Maya Isabella Vumbaka. Jack Joel Walker. Caroline Christine Waters. Patrick Allen Webb. Gabrielle Lynn Wielding. Emily Catherine Welsh. Benjamin Foster Wheeler. Emily Elizabeth Whalen. Christian Michael Williams. Jenna Marie Wilworth. Caitlin Elizabeth Wilson. Catherine Claire Wolfline. Nicole Joyce Woodward. Ansley O'Brien Worrell. Quinnaman Yee. Landon Perini York. 
John Carolus Youssef. Fatima Zira Zaidi. Maya Ellen Zent. How about another round of applause for these amazing graduates? At this time, I ask all graduates to rise. And led by your class president, Alex Wojak, move your tassel to the right side of your mortarboard. Superintendent Kavanaugh, school committee members, administrators, faculty, family, and friends, as principal of Hopkinton High School, I hereby proclaim that the members of the class of 2019 standing before you have successfully met the requirements of a diploma as set forth by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and by this school district. It is my distinct honor to declare them graduated. Congratulations to the class of 2019. We'd like you to all in the audience to remain seated as the graduates exit the Athletic Center. Cue it up, Mr. Hay.